Hey guys, this is a reference video in response to a lot of questions I get regarding my Betaflight setup. This is stuff outside of PID tuning, so I'll have a separate video about PID tuning. This is just stuff that is uh, basically I put into every one of my drones. Uh, it basically covers how I like the craft to feel, how it functions. Uh, doesn't mean this is the right way, there's a lot of different ways you could obviously set this up. This is just the way I like to do it, so um, you know, for all those people that keep asking me, how I set it up. This is the way I'm doing it currently and is uh, Betaflight 3.3 and above. I've had a previous video from last year. Uh, it was an older version of Betaflight 3.1. If you want to check that one out, if you guys use that, uh, put a card in the corner for that video in terms of how that's set up. Obviously in the newer version here things are a little bit different and I'm using a, a few newer features here in this video. If you guys want to know, you know, what I'm doing right now as of uh, May 2018, this is what I'm doing. So it's going to cover some of the obvious things here. Obviously here in ports, I'm just uh, turning on uh, one of the receivers, Serial RX. So I typically use a SBUS or IBUS receiver. I'm you know, mostly fly free sky or flat sky, so nothing really too interesting here. In the configuration, I'm pretty much running DSHOT 600 on most of uh, my stuff right now. I run reverse props on pretty much everything that I can. Uh, there's some situations where I don't, but for the most part, I do run reverse props and then you, you obviously have to enable that here in Betaflight. I do get that question a lot. I, they, people say, hey, your props run backwards. Um, they are backwards on purpose because I like the way this flies. Uh, you get cleaner air in the back and less prop wash on certain setups. And in general, this I think flies better. Plus I don't like having grass uh, cut up into my camera. If you have it uh, the normal way, the way props bend the grass gets flown into your camera and a lot of times when you land in the grass and want to take off again uh, your camera lens gets covered in, in just green grass and that's no that's not very good I'd rather have it go the other way which is um, the prop spinning the opposite direction where the grass will go away from the camera lens instead of towards the camera lens that's another reason why I set it up like this so you guys are wondering why this is the reason why now in this particular setup, I'm using an F4 flight controller, and in most cases, I'm running 8K, 4K gyro with the accelerometer off. Uh, if I have a F3, I'm usually running uh, 4K, 4K with the accelerometer off, if you guys are wondering about that. Okay, so down here in other features, I don't usually have all this other stuff turned off. I don't use things like telemetry or LED strip or anything like that. Um, Basically, those are the things I use here. I, I use the air mode, I use the OSD, because most of my craft have Betaflight OSD, and then I turn on anti-gravity and the dynamic filter. Now under power and battery, I usually uh, drop the min voltage to 2.8 and the warning cell voltage to 3.0. These are not standard. This is what I use. Um, I typically uh, drain the batteries pretty low, and a lot of times they do recover back up to 3.4, 3.5 volts. Um, obviously, that's below storage voltage, so uh, you probably won't, don't want to leave the battery in that state if you set it like this. If you want to raise these up to 3.0 or 3.1 on the warning cell, that probably would be better for you. Um, if you do it this way, you do run the risk of damaging your batteries if you if you um, leave the batteries in a very low voltage state. So keep that in mind. But this is what I do. I do this because sometimes uh, you might get death rolls or the deep beeper goes off early, that kind of stuff. I just I get annoyed by that, so I just set the voltage just extremely low. I just watch the voltage in the OSD myself to manage that and land when I feel like it's necessary. Um, sometimes I end up do killing the battery if I don't pay attention for whatever reason and uh, let the voltage drop to extremely low levels. In that case, I try and re you know charge the battery up to storage voltage right away when I get home. Uh, don't don't leave the battery in a very low voltage state. You'll, you'll probably end up killing it and it won't be you know, very useful after that if you keep doing that. So just keep that in mind. This is just what I do. I don't recommend that you do this, but this is just what I do. Okay, under pit tuning, um, I, obviously I've, I've tuned this particular quad already, but you, usually I start from the default pids, whatever comes stock in Betaflight. The rates I like are, uh, in, in super rate here is 0.75 on pitch and roll, and sometimes I'll adjust, I'll adjust these up or down, bait depend on the, the particular craft that I'm flying, uh, but this is where I usually like to start at. Uh, under pitch controller settings here, these are not standard numbers, I like 0.4 for uh, D set point weight and 0.8 for D set point transition, and uh, I can't really explain why I 
put it this way. I just like the way it feels. This is this basically has to do with the way the uh, the pit controller reacts to stick movements and how it feels, how the sticks feel to you when you're flying it. You may absolutely hate the way this feels. Some people might like it. You should just play around with this if you're not really sure what you like. Um, I, I didn't like the, the default pids um, or the default uh, settings here, so I changed that. And this is what I use for pretty much everything. I will adjust them up or down depending upon, uh, you know, if it's a five inch or a two and a half inch. I'll, if it feels kind of weird, I'll make adjustments to this uh, and let's play with it until I, I feel like I like it. Uh, I like the way it feels. Now, I also have um, VBAT PID compensation turned on, usually be <laughs> that's because I run the battery down really low. And uh, when it gets really low, weird things start happening. And if you have this turned on, uh, it will compensate for the low voltage and adjust your PIDs dynamically so that you still have the same uh, sort of uh, PID feel, uh, even at lower battery voltage. So this is why I have that turned on. But if you are um, more uh, battery conscious and don't want to you know, kill your batteries, you probably don't need this. Under anti-gravity gain, I usually, um, in this particular case, I'm at four. Um, the default's three, and I'm usually somewhere between three and seven, depending upon the particular craft. I just kind of play around with it. Obviously, this adjust, this, this number here will affect um, the way the eye, eye term is functioning. Uh, when uh, you do a lot of high foot all punch outs and you notice that the, the craft is drifting, or if there's a lot of wind and it's drifting, you may need to increase this. Some some people say uh, you'd only need to increase this if you if uh, if the uh, throttle is really high, and then um, that's it will actually increase the eye gains over here. But if you increase the eye gains over here, it'll be it'll be high, uh, both at the low end of the throttle and the high end of the throttle. This is just for increasing the eye in the situations where you're doing like uh, full throttle punch outs and that kind of stuff. Uh, again, just play around the numbers. I usually I'm between three and seven. Uh, obviously, if you're at seven or higher and it starts feeling weird or sluggish, you don't want to do that. Just go back to a lower number, and I think you'll find this. It'll be totally fine. Now, another number that I typically uh, adjust is TPA. It's called throttle pit attenuation. The default is 0.1. In this case, I didn't need to adjust it for this particular craft. Sometimes if you're um, uh, on a particular craft where it's more vibration sensitive, you need to adjust this up. Sometimes I'll, I'll adjust it as high as 0.3 and I just play around with that in the OSD. When you do a full throttle punch out and you get oscillations at the top end of the throttle, um, if you have more TPA, what it does is TPA will, will reduce uh, the P term and the D term at the max throttle so that you get less P term and D term oscillation uh, with more TPA. Which means that you'll, if you uh, use that, you have uh, pretty high P gains on the, at the low and mid end of the throttle. And then when you go to the high end of the throttle and don't want that high P gain or D gain, you can use TPA to uh, basically attenuate that and lower it at the high end of the throttle. And then the breakpoint is uh, where it starts taking effect. It's uh, the, the PWM value of the throttle, which is a little bit above 50% at 1650. You can also adjust this as to where you want that to start taking effect. So basically you just kind of play around with the numbers. Okay, so under the filter settings, this is how I start off with all my quads. Uh, I basically change it from bi-quad to PT1 and I turn all the notch filters off. Now, if you if you do this, you have run the risk of uh, smoking a motor. Just keep that in mind. Uh, but when, what I do is I uh, set up like this and I fly it for a little bit and they land and I, I check the motor temperature. So a little bit's like 30 seconds, a minute. I'm not going too crazy, because if you you know, spend the full minute uh, at 100% throttle, you're probably gonna smoke a motor if something's wrong. Uh, usually, if you build your quad right, and you have good components, nothing's broken, like no bad ESCs, no broken props, no, no bad motors, uh, you, don't, you can turn all this off and usually things will be fine. You only run into problems where you might cause damage if, uh, say, like you have a bad ESC or a, a, a motor is unbalanced or a prop is unbalanced, prop is broken, then uh, you have you risk ch uh, the chance of smoking a motor with the D term notch filter disabled. So you should keep that in mind. I, this is what I usually do, and I also, and I know that if I have a problem, I try not to fly it for too long and try and land right away. So this is what I do, and I only turn them back on if I have a problem. Otherwise, for the most in most cases, thing you know, if your quad is in good top shape, 
leaving these off should be fine. Just make sure you check your temperatures so you don't smoke anything by accident. Okay, so here under receiver, um, nothing too special here. I just adjusted these, the stick low threshold and stick high threshold because they're normally at like, I think 1100, 1900. This is based on your radio and your transmitter uh, limits uh, and how you've calibrated your transmitter, that kind of stuff. So it's gonna be specific to your setup. Uh, this is specific to my setup and my radio, so this may not apply to you, but these are the numbers I use. And I usually use about uh, two or three for dead band on RC dead band and yaw dead band. Under modes, uh, not a whole lot going on here. I think, you know, pretty much for most of my drones, I just uh, have um, arming on a three position switch and basically here in the high position or low position, it's uh, disarmed and I flick uh, the switch one into the middle position and it's armed. And then the second position I don't use, but I just have it there. If I flick it all the way down, I just put that on one switch and then I have a beeper on a separate switch and that's all I use. I don't, I don't do anything else here. No. No other fancy stuff. Sometimes on certain drones, I'll enable flip over uh, or turtle mode here. You can do that on another switch. I usually just run uh, two aux channels on most of my drones. I don't do anything fancy. Okay, so here under OSD, this is the way I set up mine. I you sometimes will put in RSSI over here on the right. I have throttle position, battery voltage, the craft name, and the uh, flight time, and those are all the things that I need. I don't want a lot of clutter on there, so you should turn a lot of that stuff off. Uh, but yeah, there's obviously a lot of other things you could use here, but for me, I try and keep it simple and not have a lot of clutter on the screen if possible, and I just have the basic things that I need, like battery voltage and flight time. Those are the two most important things to me, so I know when to land and when the battery's about to die. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. Um, hopefully it answers all your questions about how I set up my drones, Obviously, uh, this is not the only way to do it. This is just the way I do it. And this is not, <laughs> doesn't mean there's a right or wrong way to do it. This is just the way I happen to do it. You may want to do something different. Uh, I encourage you to play around with the, the numbers and, and go and fly and see for yourself because you, know, you put in my numbers and they may not feel good to you. You have to, put, you have to adjust it to the way you like, to your flying style and the way you like to fly and how you like the sticks to feel and all that kind of stuff. So just play around the numbers based on the stuff I said and I think you'll you'll find something that you like so just keep that in mind if you guys have any questions let me know and I'll talk to you guys in the next one